Welcome everyone. Mwah. Welcome, welcome. I'm Soleil Weller. I'm currently filming this in Maui, Hawaii, although I'm inside so you can't really tell, but I grabbed this hibiscus flower to give a little aloha flavor and bring some color. And um, welcome to today's masterclass. It's gonna be about an hour long, give or take a little bit of time. And um, I'm going to start with a bit of lecture, a bit of introduction, and we're going to talk about self-worth, self-love, self-worth. It's kind of one and the same with the um, intention of creating a really powerful practice that we can use over and over again to dig out, literally dig out the part of us that doesn't feel worthy of love. The part of us that doesn't feel good enough. The part of us that isn't vibrating at our highest frequency. And we're going to use a technology called Yoga Nidra. You've probably, maybe some of you have done this with me before with someone else. And um, I love Yoga Nidra because we get to lay down and it's both a practice and a technique and a technology. So it's a state of awareness. It's our highest state of consciousness where our body is in full surrender. That's why we're laying down because we get to practice letting go. The muscles let go, the breath releases, the brain lets go. And when we come into a state that is super, super relaxed, a couple things happen. It's, it's called a hypnagogic state, which just means that our body is really malleable and our brain is really malleable. So when we're in that state, we have direct access to our subconscious. Our subconscious is where a lot of these negative beliefs and limiting beliefs live in the body. And whether we're aware of them or not, that's why it's called our subconscious. These limiting beliefs can be holding us back from true love, from feeling like we're worthy of that next promotion or from our dream home or just the life of our dreams. And um, these can be really sneaky. Sometimes we don't even know where they are. We don't even know what they are or how they got there. And honestly, none of that really matters. Um, but this is a, a practice and a technique to get in there. And when we're soft, it's like we're working in the garden. When our body gets really soft, the soil, we get to dig it up, dig it up, and it becomes really, really fertile. And when the soil is fertile, then as you're preparing the garden, you get to plant the seeds so that whatever you desire can grow. So when the soil is really, really fertile, meaning that we're really super relaxed, then we're gonna reseed our consciousness with a statement, an intention statement, it's called a sankalpa in Sanskrit, that's really healing, that's really positive and heals whatever specific limiting belief you want to work on today. So um, to get there, we'll go through a little bit of self-discovery process. Um, you'll need a notebook and a pen. You can write on your computer, your iPhone. And I'd like you to go into a space that's really comfortable, a space that's private, so we can dive deep and um, a space that's cozy and comfortable. In the second part of the practice, we're gonna be laying down. So you can do that um, on your bed, you can do it on the floor in your yoga nidra nest, you can do it on your yoga mat or on a sheepskin. And then let this be a space that's quiet and free from distraction. And um, you'll need a couple props for that as well. So I have my um, Manduka bolster, which if you don't have a bolster, you can just use pillows. You'll want a blanket so you feel kind of protected and cozied and snuggled in. And then an eye mask is good, or you can just use some kind of scarf or something to block the light out so we can drop really, really deep pretty quickly. Um, so also before we get into the practice when we're working, it's nice to have a cozy space. So I went outside, I picked a couple flowers, 
I picked some greenery because that's that's important. It's nice to bring nature in. And then um, I just grabbed some, some Palo Santo, some sage and a candle. Um, I got my favorite pillows and I just set a really intentional space so that I feel good in my environment and it's really supportive of of me honoring myself and doing this work. So I want you to pause the, um, the video right now and get all of those things, put comfy clothes on, um, grab everything that I just mentioned. If you don't have something, don't worry, just, just make shift. And just hit pause for a second, get your supplies, and then meet me back here and let's, let's get ready to dive deep. Okay, make sure you have some water as well so you're hydrated. <laughs> So let's start this discussion today talking about self-worth um, and self-love. They're, they're one and the same, right? And um, it's really about doing our inner work. So when we do the deep dives, whether it's therapy, whether it's um, meditation, whatever it is that you feel is your inner work. It's probably a combination of all of those things, doing things that make you happy and fulfilled. Whatever that process is, it's critically important and it's going to be constant. I'm sorry if that bums you out at all, but no matter how much work we do, there's always going to be more. It's just like, you know, food. We, we ate dinner last night. Guess what? We have to eat dinner again tomorrow. So it's, it's a constant evolution. We're constantly growing. We're constantly changing. And as leaders, as healers, as teachers, as game changers, this is our duty in life. This is a constant process of up-leveling, of looking at who we are today in the mirror and then repeating it and doing it all over. So um, throughout the years, I've noticed that there's a direct correlation to global problems, right? Um, war, conflict, the environment, global, global warming. I've noticed that there's a direct correlation between all of those issues and self-love and self-worth. So when we can heal our inner relationship, when we can have a really high self-worth and really deeply love ourselves, we can heal the rest of the world. And this happens in connection, it happens in community, and it happens individual by individual. Let me take a drink for a second. This is not wine, it's water. I just love the bottle. Um, so I'm noticing that the more I love myself, the more I can show up and have a positive impact, the more I can show up for you, the more I can show up for my partner, for my housemates, um, for strangers that I, that I run across in the street, the greater care I am taking of myself, the greater care and energy I have to offer the world. And um, so our personal relationship, when I'm looking down, I took some notes and things that I have on my computer. I, I wanna make sure I get it all in. Our personal relationship with ourself, our inner world, it's intimate. No one knows about it, no one sees it, but the more you love yourself, the greater service we can be in the world. It's a direct correlation. There's absolutely no way around it. When I'm not taking the time to care for myself, I can fake it maybe for a moment, but, but really, I'm not gonna be able to fake it for long. You're gonna feel a difference when I'm truly loving myself, truly content inside the way that I'm showing up and presenting myself to the world and the impact that I'm making is going to mirror that. So there's a direct correlation to how you feel in my presence and how I feel about myself. So close your eyes for a minute, take that in. How the rest of the world feels in your presence is directly related to how you feel about yourself. That's important, that's really big. That's really, really 
big. And I'm not talking about narcissism. I'm not talking about arrogance or ego. Like if I feel really, really good about myself, oh man, I look, I look great in this outfit today. Look at my hair, look at this big flower. That's not what I'm talking about. That's all on the surface. But when I feel truly connected, confident, content, you can feel that, right? And there's a, there's a magnetism. There's a magnetism. And then you will in turn feel inspired, confident, clear, connected. And then there's this ripple effect that takes place everywhere and touches every single thing that we do. So let's talk about exactly what is self-love? What is self-worth? I believe that self-worth is knowing that I'm a unique being. I'm one of a kind. And it's honoring that. It's holding space for myself being exactly as I am. Honoring my exact needs, knowing what they are, having the intimacy with myself to know exactly what serves and what doesn't serve me. And this presents differently for everyone, that uniqueness. So it's all about taking the time to really dive into my inner world to get to know myself and to understand myself. And so when I'm honoring my uniqueness, I'm therefore honoring my self-worth and I'm really loving myself. But that's all it really is. Um, and then how this shows up in the world is that I'm showing up when I'm loving myself as grounded, as clear. There's a gentle energy. I don't need to prove my worth. I don't need to prove my value. Um, I'm calm. Again, I'm gentle. I know who I am. I know what matters to me and I'm going to stand up for that in a calm, patient way. And when I'm focused on being my highest self, I can be of greatest impact in the world. That's why I'm doing this work. That's why we're here today. It's not to inflate our ego and um, get more lovers and get a raise. It's to be of greater impact. And if that comes along, if a raise comes along with that and a new lover comes along with that, yay, that's part of the magic and the fun and the playfulness of being human. But that's not why we're doing this work. I want to make that really, really clear. <laughs> So let's think about a couple ways to instantly improve our self-worth and our self-love. So I want you to close your eyes and think about one thought, the best thought you could possibly think right now about yourself to instantly raise your vibration. So for me, I had some nerves about doing this class, getting on tape or film, whatever it's called. And, um, you know, are it, it, am I going to say the right things? Am I going to sound intelligent? Is this going to be impactful? You know, all of those, all of those questions came up for me. So the most empowered thought that I can have right now is that my words are impactful, that I have a lot to give and share that I'm being authentic. And when I say that, when I feel that, the result is that I, I'm instantly vibrating at a higher frequency. I'm instantly being more impactful as opposed to the self-limiting thought of, I'm not good enough, I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not prepared, there's a better time, there's a better place, yada, 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 whatever I could think right now. So I want you to sit for a moment and practice mental mastery. Literally change your vibration this second, repeating several times the best possible thought you could think right now. And then how does that positive thought make you feel? Right? For me, I feel empowered. I feel confident. 
I feel excited to share this work. I feel excited that you're tuning in, um, which is so different than nervous and um, not good enough, all, whatever came along with those lower vibration thoughts. And then next thing, I just want you to identify a way to embody this feeling. So for me, I embody this energy with action, with movement. Um, so what's something today that you can do that's really healthy for you, that shows how much you love yourself, how much you honor yourself? Maybe it's coming to this workshop. Um, for me, it was getting up this morning and I went straight to the beach, took my favorite walk, swam in my favorite spot with a girlfriend. And um, that is the best possible way I could start my day. So I chose to do that because I know that I'm worth it that my life is precious and I'm going to take action to embody self-love and do things that make me feel good and raise my vibration. Okay, so let's move into creating our sankalpa. You'll need your pen and paper for this. And um, don't let the word sankalpa scare you or um, anything. It's, it's a Sanskrit word. So I'm going to use that word to honor the practice and the lineage. And um, it's literally, let me read this definition that I have. Sankalpa is a positive affirmation or intention statement that's based on the premise that you already are who you need to be to fulfill your greatest purpose in life, your highest calling and your true dharma. So there's one thing in there that really stands out based on the premise that you already are who you need to be to fulfill your greatest purpose in life. That's really important because it's kind of working backwards. It's working backwards in such a way that we're coming, we're looking as if we already have our dream life. We already have our deepest fulfillment, our deepest desire, our deepest longing has already come true. And we're vibrating at that frequency in order to create it. So there's a lot of neuroscience and, you know, a lot of Joe Dispenza work, so many other healers and teachers that are sharing work like this. And you can trace it back thousands and thousands of years to the tantric lineage, to this practice of Sankalpa, that when we look back as if we're already where we want to go to, that's how we get there. So that's really important piece to this work. Um, let's see. So this is a process that we're going to work through right now that honors the longing in our heart and it gives it a voice so that your soul's greatest purpose, your deepest desire, your deepest longing is honored. And that's what true self-love and true self-worth is, is that I I'm worthy. I am good enough to have my deepest desire. I am good enough to have the life of my dreams right now. So in um, thinking about our affirmation, I'm going to read you one more thing. A powerful affirmation. These are some tips on how we're going to create it. A powerful affirmation aligns with the desire to be in service, right? So this is not a selfish want. We're not just talking about like, I want to get a, a nose job or something. This is about, this is much, much bigger. It's about how you're showing up in the world, being of service to external goals and aspirations. Your sankalpa must be meaningful and timeless. So timeless meaning that it's not about getting something um, that's going to expire. It's about being an energy. It's about um, showing up as your highest self in a way that um, you can always show up as. I hope that makes sense. Um, and then by achieving your sankalpa, you're not only serving your immediate desires and improving you and yourself, but you're honoring your greatest purpose in life for the benefit of the entire world. So this is big, you guys, this is big. This is about you and your personal needs and desires in order to put that puzzle piece as part of the matrix that's gonna impact 
the rest of the world. So this is about reaching big, spreading your roots really, really deep so that your greatest um, efforts can blossom out of you to impact everyone around you positively. So this is, again, it's not about ego or arrogance or selfishness. This is about being big in the world. Okay, so I'd like you to get out your pen and paper. You're going to write your affirmation statement. I'll give you a couple examples. Um, as you create this affirmation statement, it must um, read like a fact. It must be really specific. The more specific it is, the better. And then it must be achievable in the next, let's say like three to 12 months. So something, something your heart is longing to achieve relatively soon. And, um, and it must be clear and simple enough that you can remember it. Cause I'd like you to repeat this practice at least for the next month, maybe for the next year or so to really have direct impact in your life. And, um, we talked already about the, the accompanied feeling. So when you say this thought, how does your body feel? So here's a few examples. Um, really this m most simple example is um if i don't believe i'm good enough for love i'm single and i think that i might i have shame around it i must have done something wrong an example of a positive sankalpa statement for that would be i'm worthy of love it can be that simple i am worthy of love i think that's something that really um, is wide reaching that we can all relate to. But let me read you a couple other ones. Um, even more specific, here's one student that was working on partnership. So hers read, I have a loving partner. Together we share and support each other and each other's lives. And then here's another one. I'm happy, I'm fearless and in my power. I met my financial goal and increased my income by more than 50%. So again, I want you to listen to how it was read or stated as if it already happened. I met my financial goal and increased my income. So not I am going to, but I met, I already did it. Okay, so get out your pen and paper. Let's spend the next um, several minutes just jotting it down. And again, this is a work in progress. We can edit it. I also want to invite you um, to email me your statement and I can help you um, go over it. I can help you adjust it, edit it. And we can really get the most impactful statement down. So also in the, um, I put these guidelines in writing at the bottom of this YouTube video. So if you want to pause and just scroll and see it, I'm, I'm a really uh, visual person. So if you want to pause and then look at these instructions, if you feel like you want to hear it again or look at it again. So just quickly jot it down. Doesn't have to be perfect. Does have to be honest. Okay, so if you want to email me your Sankalpa, excuse me, and um, ask any questions about it or see if there's any way that I would edit it or add to it, my email is info at soleilweller.com. Pop me an email and I'd love to see um, what you've gotten and I'd love to, to share any insight that I might have.
around it. Okay, so that concludes this portion of the workshop. Now we're gonna use your Sankalpa. And again, if you didn't come up with the perfect one right now and you feel like you really wanna work with it, you'll have time. And um, for today, I want you, if you couldn't come up with anything, I want you to use, I am lovable. I am lovable. I am lovable. That's really powerful and one I turn to often. So um, we're going to move into the practice portion. We're going to move into the yoga nidra. Grab all of your props, comfy clothes, turn off your cell phone. And I want this recording to be of the best quality. So I'm going to switch over to audio so I can use, I have this great microphone so the sound can be really good. I want you to turn the volume up get set up in your cozy yoga nidra nest and um, enjoy the practice. Mwah. Lots of love, lots of support.